Hi, I'm Norm Kelsey, the lay leader at First United Methodist Church of North Hollywood. Let's begin today's virtual online worship by singing our opening hymn. Let us pray. Spirit of wind and fire, come to us this day, freeing us from our fears. Lift us up when we have fallen. Dust us off and set us squarely on the path to hope you have set before us. Remind us that we are never far from your presence, Lord. Get us ready for the great adventure and opportunities that lie before us. Help us to be good and willing workers for you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now will you please join me in the call to worship. Lord, our hearts are on fire this day. Set the blazes of hope that burn away fear. Lord, we come here to be empowered to serve you. Cause the winds of change to blow away doubt and alienation. Praise to God who has brought to us the Holy Spirit. Let us worship and rejoice, for God is challenging and empowering us this day. Hey kids! Well, take a look at the background behind me and notice the fun and colorful balloons floating up into the air. This got me thinking about things that we use day to day that need air in order to function and be useful. Things like balloons or maybe a basketball or tires on cars. Um, I also got these fun little pouches of air inside of a package that I received yesterday and it had some fragile items inside. So these little pouches protected it. Now, can you imagine if this pouch didn't have air or if a tire didn't have air or balloons and basketballs for that matter? They would be really useless. And this is a great way to learn about the church, especially today. It's a special day called Pentecost. And this is when the Holy Spirit came down into the church and breathed life into it. Before the Holy Spirit, the church was lifeless. 
when the Holy Spirit came down, people started to witness and share the good news of Jesus with everyone they met. Even if they didn't speak the same language, it didn't matter if they were talking about Jesus, people could understand every word that was said. Well, thousands of people then joined the church and the church grew and grew and became alive. It was a great and important event for the church. And we kind of consider it our birthday, actually. So happy birthday to our church. And remember, just like a balloon needs to be filled to be all that it's intended to be, we need to allow that Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and souls and allow us to be everything that God wants us to be. Have a grateful day. Good morning. Our scripture today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. I'll be reading to you from the New Living Translation. On this day of Pentecost, the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tons of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to do so. At the time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet here they are speaking our own native languages. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. after me. I am significant. I am significant. Because God says so. Because God says so. I am significant. I am significant. And I was created. And I was created. To do significant things. To do significant things. Now find someone else in the room, point to them and say, you are significant. You are significant. Because God says so. Because God says so. You are significant. You are significant. And you were created. And you were created. To do significant things. To do significant things. As the body of Christ, we all proclaim we are significant. We are significant. Because God says so. Because God says so. We are significant. We are significant. And we were created. And we were created. To do significant things. We can clap our hands for that. That being good. Uh, subject today, day of Pentecost, is God speaks your language. And I'm so I'm so happy that we got to hear worship in another language today. Amen. But that language that we heard it in was maybe foreign to most of us, but was actually something that was pleasing and, and clear to Lebeck and others who, who, may have, who may know that dialect and know that language. And it was a lot like what was happening on Pentecost. It reminds me of something that I, I taught on a few years ago that was super popular, maybe not as popular now, called the five love languages. Anybody remember that? Yes. Anybody know their love languages, know their top two, you know, that kind of thing? Uh, and, and five love languages are touch and words and, and time, quality time, right? Uh, acts of service and, and receiving of gifts. The idea is, and it's a breakthrough idea, that if someone knows how to best love me and gives me love that way, I'll receive it in the best way. The five love languages are not about giving, it's about receiving. It's about understanding how someone receives love. I am a words of affirmation and touch person. So it's like, hug me and tell me I'm great. <laughs> hug me and tell me you caught me doing something good. Uh, my, my partner in life is a quality time and acts of service person. Turn off your phone, hang out with me, and take out the trash without me telling you to. Yeah. <laughs> Acts of service, take something off my plate before I ask you to. 
you see something wrong, go ahead and fix it without me having to point it out. She receives love that way. That's, her, that's a love language for her. She, she could, you could hand her a Gucci bag and she'd be like, ah, she paid too much for that. Why, why do I want that? But you take out the trash. <laughs> and it's, uh, it, it goes that way for different people. They hear things a certain way and they receive it and they receive it completely and better when they hear it in ways that they actually understand. Are you following me? Yes. Okay, so the day of Pentecost is a, a dark time because 50 days before that, Pentecost means 50 by the way, 50 days after the Passover, we get to the, fe the festival or the feast of the harvest, the harvest feast, the feast of the weeks. The first harvest comes in in May, June, and there's a huge festival where everyone comes back to Jerusalem and they bring some of the fruit of the first harvest. And that harvest is now made into the loaves of bread that are used in the, in the temple, as well as distributed, as well as distributed around to people who, who are in need. It is a wonderful festival that is saying that we are grateful to God who makes a harvest possible. Right? So they come together for the festival, but people come from everywhere. Jewish people who are born Jews, as well as those who are proselytes, those who, are, who have become Jews and been grafted in and have converted to Judaism. People are coming from everywhere, but also you've got to know this is Palestine. This is a place where not only Jews live, but Gentiles lived as well. My point here is that the Pentecostal experience was an experience that wasn't just, ex just, that just happened to pure Jews. It was one that was doled out severally, doled out to everyone who was around. Now, you've got to go back a little bit. We, we read from uh, Acts chapter 2, but you've got to go to chapter 1 to understand kind of what sets this up. Jesus says to his disciples, after, after coming back on Easter, if you will, Resurrection Day, for 40 days Jesus showed himself to various people, not everyone, but to various people. And, and it culminated in this last time together with his disciples and with his, some close folk of the disciples. And he says these curious words. He says, you go to this place and wait. See, there's something about in dark times. It, those are times where it, it's time to quiet down and listen and wait. Go to this place, this upper room place that we've rented out. And stay there. And one day soon, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, will fill you, and that give you the power to be witnesses. The power to be witnesses, not only here in Jerusalem, among the folk who all look like us and believe like us, but to Samaria, which are the folks who are our distant cousins that we don't like, to the outermost parts of the world, Jerusalem, Judea County, Samaria, out in the suburbs, further out in the exurbs, and people that we really don't like who moved out there, as well as the outermost parts of the world. Those places were all represented on the day of Pentecost. And out comes the, the Holy Spirit in the form of Peter, who was part of this group where this miraculous thing happened. We wear red to, to signify that, 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 that fire came, a, a fire came. Pentecost, Pentecost, by the way, is not a quiet day. Pentecost is not a quiet holiday or quiet high holy day. It's the loudest of the high holy days because they said that it was like a mighty rushing wind that came into the building. And that tongues of fire, like fire, came and, and sat on the people and filled them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And it gave them an empowerment to actually speak to the world in the world's languages. That day it says that Peter goes out and he proclaims what these people in the room already knew. Uh, Jesus, born, raised, lived died, crucified, raised, Messiah. And the Spirit has now come. Now this embodied grace has gone, but this disembodied grace that can be everywhere all at once and fill us is now here. They pour that out and say, 
is in essence, understand everyone. What we've learned here is, they, is, is that it ain't over till it's over. And it ain't over till God says it's over. We thought it was going to go one way, didn't go that way, and we thought it was over. It was the end of the world, as R.E.M. would say, as we know it. But the end of the world as we know it has happened to all of us, amen? Amen. <laughs> Have any of us had moments in our life where something happened that changed everything? It was the end of the world as we know it. My father, my, my, my beloved Mr. Jimmy passed away five and a half, six weeks ago now. And it was the end of the world as I know it. It'll never be the same. We'll never have breakfast again. We'll never sing together again. We'll never hang out together again. I'll never hear stories of Korea again. I'll never hear stories of him being in a quartet again. It's the end of the world. We'll never have his presence and his sweetness and his love anymore in this realm. It's the end of the world as we know it. But the R.E.M. writer was right when he says, but I feel fine. Yeah. Because the good news is that I'm going to see my Mr. Jimmy again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The good news is that my Mr. Jimmy's in a cloud of witnesses right now, yes. cheering me on right now. Yes. He's, he's being black church right now for me right now. Give me the, all the amens I'm not getting from you. He is giving it to me. <laughs> In a way that I can feel you, Mr. Jimmy. I can see him rocking a little bit as I'm speaking. And he's waiting for me to say something like, can I get an amen? So he can give me a big amen. That's just Mr. Jimmy right now. He's translating. It's the, it was the end of the world as I know it, but I feel fine. Jesus is gone. It's the end of the world as they know it. But the Holy Spirit has come and they feel fine. They're pouring out to the people out there, and the people are hearing it in their own language, like a, a love language. God is touching me. God is giving me words of affirmation. God is giving me this gift of the Holy Spirit. God is giving me quality time right now. Yes. Amen. God speaks your language. Whatever your language may be, God speaks, a mighty fortress is our God. Yeah. Right? God speaks, you don't know like I know. Ooh, there's no one in the room yeah. <laughs> who speaks that language. God speaks, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. Amen. Amen. No one speaks that language. He speaks the language that I love for me when he says, you are force, you are not against us. Champion of heaven, you made a way for all the world to see. Because you make me brave. You make me brave. You call me out beyond the shore into the wave. You make me brave. You make me brave. No fear can hinder now the promises you made. You make me brave. Brave like Peter. Peter getting out of a boat, being called out into the wave. But God made Peter brave. What is this going to, Christian? What are you saying this for, Christian? Because if you understand the words being spoken by, 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 uh, by Luke here, who's writing the second volume of his two-volume set, one called the Gospel according to Luke, and the other called the Acts of the Apostles. Luke wrote them both, and Luke writes them both to a guy named Theophilus. It's, it's right there. It's just two letters to the same person. And Luke is saying here, using the word spirit, I will pour out my spirit. He's calling back to Joel who said, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Mm. But he's also calling back to a, 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 a definition or a connotation of that word that I think is so wonderful here. Because the word spirit there, when Jesus said that the spirit will come and, and fall on you and fill you, 
strong, popular meaning for it at the time was bravery. Hmm. I am going to pour bravery into you. Okay. I'm going to pour courage into you. That spirit equals bravery. Say bravery. bravery. Say I'm brave, I'm brave by the spirit. By the spirit. No, and the reason why you're brave by the spirit is because the spirit is bravery. Oh, if you catch this, it's going it's to it's rock your world. It's going to rock your world. He says bravery, and it's a very important concept because he also says you'll be witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. The word, the word for witnesses there is the same word we get the word martyr from. It's the same, same Greek word for, for martyr. And, and martyr was understood as a concept. It was understood as uh, the ability to say, I witnessed something that I believe. Mm -hmm. I recognize as well that there's opposition to my, what I witness. There's opposition to my belief, yes. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I witness something, there's, I know, but I also know there's, there's op opposition. Mm -hmm. Number three, I testify to it anyway. Mm -hmm. I know there's gonna be opposition, but I testify to it anyway. Mm -hmm. I know there's gonna be opposition, but I come out anyway. I know there's opposition, but I vote this way anyway. I know there's gonna be opposition, but I, I march in this, this, uh, this, uh, 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 I march in this picket line anyway. Come on. I know there's going to be opposition, but I testify, I represent yeah. anyway. Yes. Four, I suffer for testifying. What martyrdom means? It means that I, I'm willing to suffer, even die, because of something I believe that I'm willing to testify, even though I know there's opposition. The opposition is usually the majority. The opposition is the folks who have the power and are the powers that be. And when the powers that be say, oh, no, 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 that's not the way it's going to go, then things can happen. You can suffer for this. You can lose something for this. You can lose someone for this. But the other, the last piece of, of being a martyr, being a witness, starts off with belief. Secondly, you know that there's opposition, but you testify anyway, third. Number four, you gotta suffer for it. Somehow you, you suffer, die, you lose something, you lose someone, you lose some things uh, that you're willing to lose. And five, at some point you're vindicated. At some point you're commemorated. See, martyrdom also, comes down to a point where people finally come around and realize you were right. Yes. They realize what you believe was right. Yeah, so, at the, at the time that it happened, Martin Luther King was not the most popular person in America. That's right. Y'all do get this. Yes. He didn't get killed on the day of the dream speech. Nope. Hello. Because there were some letters from a Birmingham jail that happened. Mm -hmm. There was a whole new campaign about, about equality and, and diversity and inclusion, and even, oh, the R word came up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Reparations. Mm -hmm. And that got him killed. Today there's a holiday. And today there's a lot of folks saying, shame on you for not agreeing with him and not being with him in that pursuit. He's vindicated. He's commemorated. What does that have to do with you? What does that have to do with me? I am here today to say that the same spirit, the same bravery that was poured into 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost is already in you. Amen. I'm here to activate that. Mm. I'm here to act as Peter was that day and tell you who you really are. I do it every week, but I want you to really get this. You are significant. I do this every week, but you have been endowed with the power to do significant things, the courage to do significant things, 
the courage and the bravery to do something significant with your life and change the world around you. Amen. It's going to cost you something. Mm. It's going to cost you the unserious people. Yes, yes, yes. that's right. Okay. Finale tonight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, but you're not serious people. It's going to cost you unserious people. It's going to cost you the folks that you thought were your friends but really aren't. Hello. Yes. It may cost you some, it may, it may cause some betrayal by people that you care about the most. You might get hurt because you're standing there and you're standing firm on your belief and there's somebody that you love who's on the opposite side who is going to kill your character. Why? Because you believe in inclusiveness, for example. Because you believe the gospel is poured out on everybody and the yes. gospel's for everyone. Yes. That there is no one who can't be on a pew because of anything. Yeah. Mm. You believe that and there are people who say, no, I, I can't go to your church. You're letting anybody in there. Uh, I can't go to your church. You're letting anybody up there. Yeah. I can't go to your church. You're baptizing anybody and you're giving communion to anybody. I can't go to your church because you're feeding people and you're taking care of people. You're clothing the naked and taking. I can't go to your church. You're too much about justice and not about Jesus. Who believes that stuff? The majority of people. The majority of church people. No ho first. Y'all are unusual. Y'all don't just have pretty days of diversity. Y'all do diversity every day, every single day. You honor someone coming up here and singing an Aboriginal song. You honor someone coming here and dancing a, a, a Native American dance with a hoop that just blew my mind. Yes. <laughs> You honor, you honor people coming up here and doing readings that connect the, the hero's journey with the culture that they come from. And, and we all are better for it. We all are bigger for it. And no, there are thousands of people in here, but who cares? That's, right. That's what it costs to stand up. That's what it costs to be witnesses. That's what it costs. We've seen a Jesus who loved all. We've witnessed, witnessed it. Mm -hmm. We know there's opposition. We know there are people out there who say, no, 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 no. There are a whole lot more conditions than you're putting out there. This grace thing can't be that easy. Can't be that inclusive. Cannot be. There's opposition. But you know what? You all put a statement, a strong statement of inclusivity in front of your bulletin every week anyway. You all call yourself open and affirming, and you call yourself inclusive. Why? And it's in defiance to the, the norms. It's in defiance to the evangelical norms. It, it's, in, it, it's in defiance to the culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Suffer for it? Ah. It's the end of the world as we know it, but I feel fine. Yes, amen. I, I come here every week, and I don't care if there's two of y'all or 50 of y'all or 1,000 of y'all. We're going to have church. Amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, we're going to praise Jesus. Amen. amen. We're going to call ourselves and each other significant. Yes. And we're going to leave here with something we can do in this world. Yes. Or at least the, the, the call to do something significant in this amen. world. And, then, and, and, and my, 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 the way I see it is the same way that they must have seen it there on the day of Pentecost. It started with 120 folks who got it. And they walked out, and they didn't know what was going to happen. But they started talking to a crowd of 3,000. And in that crowd of 3,000 was every love language and virtually every known language there was. And out of them came the gospel, the good news. It ain't over until God says it's over. The good news is that you have been endowed with the bravery to overcome the world. And they got to hear it in their own language. It wasn't something you had to click somebody to the side and say, what do they mean? What did that say? Translate that for me. No, no, no. I heard it in my own language. Are they drunk up there? What's going on up here? How are these linguists talking to me? But what are they saying? And what they're saying is that whom the sun sets free is free indeed, and you've been set free. Amen. 
What they're saying is that you've been given what you need to not only overcome in this world, but in the world to come. Amen. What they're saying is no weapon formed against you will prosper. Because you've been given the courage, the same courage that let the people march around Jericho and see the walls come down. The same courage that let Esther stand up to her husband, the king, and tell her her truth about who she's from, who she is, and what he needs to do. The same thing that got Peter to say, I don't know about you 11 guys who are really scared, but I'm getting out of the boat out there with Jesus. You make me brave, is what Peter's saying. You call me out beyond the shore and to the waves. You make me brave. And all I'm here to say is that God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't play favorites. God doesn't play gender games. God doesn't play racial games. God pours out God's spirit on all flesh. Amen. So the word today is wake up. Yes. Wake up. What you've been looking for is in you already. Who you've been looking for is in you already. What you need, and I don't care if you're four or 84, what you need to do the significant things you have before you is in you already. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you have the power to be witnesses. And now, with that power, going forward, next week, we're going to do a little coaching session. We're going to get real practical. Because I got four more weeks, y'all. Wow. And in this four more weeks, there are two things I want to accomplish. The first is to get us beyond hearing into doing. Okay. All right. The second, I'll take those two claps. The second, <laughs> the second is to Bring Juneteenth mm. to this place yes. Okay. Yes. in a way like you've never seen it before. All right. Y'all with me? Yes. yes. Yep. Here for it. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Repeat after me. I am brave. I am brave. Because I'm filled. Because I'm filled. With the spirit of bravery. The spirit of courage. The spirit of truth. I am brave. And I'll use this bravery to do significant things. Let's pray. God, you are the God who pours out your spirit to empower us, to enrich us, to equip us. And God, we receive it. We receive your power, we receive your courage, we receive your bravery, and ask you now to show us what to do with it. Remind us of what you've put us here to do. Reveal to us what we don't know to do, but want to do in your power. And unction us, if you will, to do what we already know to do. We know that your spirit is is strong and is more powerful than ours. We know that your spirit is, is empowering us to this day just like you did in the day of Pentecost. Now I pray a Pentecostal blessing on this house. On everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone who's watching this online, I pray this Pentecostal blessing on them, a blessing of empowerment, a blessing of purpose, a blessing of enthusiasm and energy, a blessing of seeing things differently and new, and finding something that we're willing to do and even willing to die for. Thank you, Lord, for that endowment. 
thank you for your spirit here today filling us, forming us into who we are here to be. When we run out of words uh, of our own to petition you, to pray to you, we return to you the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. God bless you.